happy Friday, everyone. Um, before I get too far into the live, oh, well, first of all, hi, it's Friday, March 29th, 2024. I did have issues last Friday. I also had streaming issues yesterday, but I was able to come right back. So if there is a streaming issue today, let me know in the chat and just know that I'll probably go out and have to come back. I hope I do it doesn't happen, but I don't know what's going on here with the internet. So we'll do our best and we're going to cross our fingers that everything will be fine today. Hello, Linda and Diana, Anita. Hi, Steph. So good to see you guys here today. Oh, yeah, I'm already having issues. <laughs> Hold on, everyone. Okay, some of you say it's fine, some say not. On my end, it says that it's not great. So give me just one second, everyone. I'm so sorry. I am still here. This is so irritating. Oh, this is so irritating. Let me see. Thank you guys for being patient. I'm really sorry. You can hear me. Oh yeah, technology is great. No pausing. Okay, well, some people say yes, but on my end, it says it's not working great. I am just going to refresh this really fast. Give me one second. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still getting an error. But that happened in the past and everything was fine. Okay, fine. Looks clear. Oh, hi, Simon. I'm going to go with it. Sorry, everybody. I, technology is lovely when I'm having to figure it out. Okay, some of you say yes, some no. If it gets too bad, I will just go out. And so sorry. We'll figure it out. I'll come back later. Um, okay, lots of you saying good. We'll see if it clears up on YouTube's end. Let me know. Um, and I know Shari is here. So Shari, just text me if I completely stop, if you don't mind. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, everybody. Yeah, Shari says go with it. I'm going to. So today, I thought it would be super fun to play. So I saw Simon here in the chat with Simon Hurley's new Lunar Pace they are neon bright, and we're going to create some super fun cards. Oh, Molly, yes, I do have Cox, unfortunately, and it's the best option. So don't, no one start sending me messages. I live in an area where there's not a whole lot, and that is the best, I've been told, by the other people I've gone to, the other service providers for what I want to do. It's a long story. We're not going to bore everybody with my internet issues and how many times I've called them. <laughs> so we are going to play today with some bright lunar paste. Here is one card that's most of the way done, but I'm playing with all the colors. I don't do neon very often, but I'm going to show you guys how I take the neon and I make it um, my own. So who knows? Uh, it, let me know if it's not working, you guys. I'm so sorry. I keep getting notifications on my end saying it's not working. 
Ah! Oh, how fun! Playing the Easter Bunny, filling plastic eggs. Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera around. Let's take a look at all of the colors, and then let's start playing with some fun stencils. Neon channel, you're in our 80s. Absolutely. <laughs> Shari, I love that. That is hilarious. Okay. Um, let me just fix that. They are gorgeously bright. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not normally the bright girl. First, let's talk about the colors. Ne the names are amazing. Hot mess is your is the pink. Mood ring. Let's see. No chill. Tangent. Voltage. Dart frog. How funny is that? They're so clever. And yellow jacket. Oh, yes, Heidi. That's so sweet. She says, um, that she's very excited to see what I do with the paste because, or see what I do with them because Simon's videos give her an appreciation for neon. I love that. So they're super fun. I'm going to show you because I wanted to play with all the colors and there is some dry time. You can speed it up with a heat tool. I am not a huge fan of doing that. So if at all possible, I don't. So I did let things sit and dry off camera. But I want to show you, here's a pink version. Here's my purple version. There might be some little boo-boos, but I'm just rolling with it. Usually you can disguise them or I just don't care. <laughs> uh, mood ring is not 80s. <laughs> Shari said that's funny. And this yellow one. Now, what I did after I did all of my stenciling is I took some Tim Holtz Distress Mica Stain and I just kind of made my own little flicks of color all over the backgrounds to give it even additional shimmer. So that's what those droplets are and that's what we're gonna create. So I am going to do a blue version here on camera today. Let's move those out of the way and let's talk about the products we're gonna use with these awesome lunar pastes. I have the Simon Says Stamp Groovy blooms. I mean, of course, I had to use something that said groovy uh, for these bright neon lunar pastes. That is the stencil set that we're using, and it's a three piece stencil set. So there is dry time, the magic of video. I have step outs. <laughs> um, so there would be dry time, or you would need to heat set it if you're doing it all at once. And then for my greetings, because I want the background to really be the star of the show, I'm doing something simple with this airy greetings stamp die combo from Simon Says Stamp. Oh, good. It says it's I have an excellent connection now. Well, I'm glad I didn't go out of my live like I thought I might. <laughs> Boo-boos give it character, Jen said. Absolutely, Jen. That's You're my spirit animal. That's me. I find sometimes I get really upset. Here, this is a good example. Like some of the paste got underneath my stencil. This was the third layer. So that, some of that's to be expected. But then I thought, well, I can disguise it. Or is it really going to be that noticeable? Once you get your greetings, you could even put a bigger greeting on here if you wanted to. Once you get something else on there, it's totally fine. So usually I just roll with it. We just, you know, it is what it is. Now, a couple of notes about working with any kind of paste. You're going to want to clean all of your products right away. I have a bucket of water over here to the side where I'm going to dunk my stencils and any tools I use in it so that I can wash them up later and they don't dry while we're working. But if you're doing, like when I was making the samples, I was cleaning them all immediately. So that is always, um, oh good, Molly says no more buffering for her. Good, let's hope it stays that way. Now the other thing I want to note about these lunar paste, and that you probably already noticed, I should have mentioned this right off, look how vibrant and beautiful they look on black cardstock. So if you want a beautiful black 
base instead of something white. White is awesome too, or any color for that matter. You could use anything, but I loved the contrast of the black with the bold neon colors. They show up beautifully. So that was something that I thought was awesome. So let's start with our first layer. I'm working on my Glassboard Studio glass mat. I am sorry that there's a glare. Let's just put that there. Hopefully it hides it a little bit. Um, and I'm going to just pop my stencil in place right over my background. And I'm going to use some heavy duty magnets to hold it down. And you're going to see why I'm working on this. I often use like the stamp wheel from Altenew, but today this is just going to be a little easier for me to scrape the color and to clean up. It does look gorgeous on black. Hi, Susan. It, Nita says it gives the cards character. It for sure does. And Laura says no mistakes in crafting, only extra opportunities. I love that. Yes. So this is no chill. And this is a beautiful blue color. And look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? Now definitely head over to Simon's channel too and check out. He has lots of great tips for working with this. This is just literally one thing you can do with it. I'm going to get a bunch here on my palette knife and I'm just going to spread it here along the top. What I love, it feels like frosting a cake. <laughs> Who knows? This is what I think about. So I spread it along the top and then you're going to want to have a stencil pal or, or tool of some sort. You don't have to. You can use your palette knife, but I love these for this technique. And we're just going to nice and slow pull that color and then I just move my magnets as I go down the panel. And I try not to go over it too much because that's often when the problem occurs when you get some of that stencil paste or the paste underneath the stencil. But I want to fill in all of the areas. I'm just going kind of nice and easy. And then when I have it like I want, gently, gently, I'm just going over the top and scraping up. Whoops, I went a little too hard there. Go up a up and down a little bit more. And I pull all of that paste off because that is a ton of extra paste. <laughs> April says now she wants a cake. Susan loves that color. Yes, Shari, the drawback is definitely the lighting for video. For sure. So then I'm just going to scrape up all of that excess. I mean, we don't want any of that gorgeous paste going to waste and we're gonna put it back into our container. And then I like to go ahead and just seal it back up. I'm gonna grab a wipe. Oh, Shari, it's so pretty. It's called No Chill. It's so good. I'm gonna wipe a couple things just with baby wipes for camera. I'll peel up that stencil here in just a second. Probably should have done that first, huh? You know, is what it is. <laughs> okay. So then we're just going to carefully, carefully peel that up and look at that. I'll hold it up here. It is so stinking pretty. Now you could do multiple colors on this as well. So let's say you want to put several colors and then just go down the whole thing and make a multicolor background. That would be super fun too. But I just went with one. I went with my, my normal monochromatic, kind of monochromatic, I suppose, where I like things this way. Yeah, Simon has all the blue hearts. It is so pretty. Yeah, my teal lovers are going to love that no chill color. It's so good. So, so good. Okay, so as I mentioned, it will take a little bit to dry. I'm going to set mine completely out of the way. We're going to pretend that we let it set for probably an hour. If you want, you can use a heat tool. Um, like I said, I normally don't. I like mine to sit and air dry. So with the magic of video, 
Let's pretend it's like an hour later. <laughs> and here is our background. So it's ready for layer number two. For layer number two, I want to add, I think we'll go, there's the flower centers or the leaves. And I'm going to go ahead and, you know, maybe I'll do leaves first. No, I can't because I forgot my sample has got the flower centers first. We're going to do the flower centers. Kind of wish I'd done it opposite, but you know. And these line up so easily. So I'm just going to go in. I'm going to make sure I'm hitting, whoops, let's move it down. Hitting the flower centers and I'm just going to use my magnets and I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. So sorry, everybody. The magic of television. The cake is already baked. Shari wins. That's hilarious. <laughs> it is the, and Simon said the magic of TV. Exactly. Okay, so you can choose anything for a flower center here. I love this voltage color. It's really a neon color. So we've got yellow jacket, which is deaf. It's yellow jacket. It's actually the most beautiful yellow color. I love that. But I really love this voltage for the flower centers. I used it for this purple background here. And you can see it's just kind of, it's really neon-y. I don't know. I love it. So that's what we're going to use for our flower centers today. Look at that. That's bright. Simon has a tip for everybody. Yes, you can use your heat tool, he says. Just keep the heat tool moving so that the paste doesn't bubble. And I, full disclosure, I did heat one of those. I can't remember which one. Something, I needed it to dry a little quicker, and so I did heat set, and it does work. I just am funny. I like to let everything set and dry, but definitely, if you're in a hurry, heat it up. Okay, so again, I this is just what I found worked best for me. Let's not talk about how many I threw away that I didn't like. <laughs> so I'm going to go nice and slow again. Just filling in all those areas to do our flower centers. And then I'm going to go right over the top and get all of that excess so that I can put it back in our jar. Just like so. Let's see. <laughs> Simon says he's always in a hurry, yes. I love that. And there's our flower centers. How beautiful, you guys. Look at that. Isn't that fun? Layering paste is very fun, but it definitely, you have to have patience. Or if you don't have patience, be like Simon and heat set this with your heat tool. <laughs> Okay, again, let's do a little cleanup so that we can do our third and final layer. I'm just using a baby wipe for fast cleanup today and with the magic of TV. <laughs> Here is one that's dry. So pretty, right? Okay. Does this make some of you rethink neon? Because I have to say, this makes me rethink neon a little bit. I'm not usually a neon person, but man, these are fun. I absolutely love them. So now we're going to go in with our leaves. And just line up all those open spots. And of course, for this, we are going to use Dart Frog. Oh, Linda, thank you so much. Add to cart, add to cart, add to cart. Steph said, yay. And you guys, these will work beautifully. If you have some of the other lunar paste, you can for sure get all kinds of fun color combos. So we're going to do a nice little bit of this green right there. And then 
we're just going to go all the way down our panel adding our leaves. And I kind of think slow and steady works good here. I got to say I'm not normally the slow steady person, but I find that this gives the best application. I see I miss oh, well, let's not mess up our leaves too much. And there we go. So pretty. Let me put the rest of this back in my container. And put everything in water. I got soapy water over here that I'm dumping everything in. Now, if I was making this off camera and how I did off camera, I went to my sink and I just immediately washed everything. Yes, Jen, for sure. She says the black cardstock makes her rethink it. It looks so gorgeous on black. Look at that shine. How beautiful is that? It is so fun, you guys. Okay, so I want to set that aside while I do a little wipe. Linda says it makes her happy. Oh, I love that. Thank you. And just like that, you have a multicolor textured background that is amazing. So again, here's kind of some that I have already done. You can see how they look. They have all of that awesome mica stain spatter all over them. So this one isn't quite dry. Let's grab a heat tool because I didn't make a complete one for this color combo, but I do want to show you, we're going to take some shiny bobble and add just a nice little bit of sh extra shimmer to these. Oh, thank you, Simon. Shari says these colors on black are great. I'm Whoops. I am staring at some stencils that may like new paste. Oh, for sure. They are for sure going to like it. <laughs> Linda says it makes her want to put on 70s music. Oh, that's a great idea. That would be fun. So I'm just going to heat this just a little bit. And like Simon told us earlier, Keep your heat tool moving so it doesn't bubble. I'm not going to worry too much if this is all the way dry. I want it to be a little dry before I add the mica stain, but I'm going to set it aside to dry and we will do complete finishing for the other cards or color combos that I have already finished. I think that's good. All right. So I'm going to grab my plastic box here. so that I can put this in there. Let's talk a little bit about the colors of Distress Mica Stain that I used. I went ahead and did a tone on tone. So this is, whoops, let me grab the right one. Hot Mess, which is there a better name? Hot Mess Express right here. Hot Mess and I used Cocktail Party for the Mica Stain all over this one. So that was kind of my match for that. For the beautiful, beautiful purple, this is Mood Ring. And for this one, I used Hocus Pocus. And I loved how those worked together. And then for my yellow and orange flowers, I used Harvest Moon. For our blue background here, Let's see, question, can you water down the paste to splatter with? Oh, I don't know. Linda, that's a great question. Simon, if you are still in the chat, can you chime in? Because I have no idea about adding anything to it. I've not tried that. If he isn't here, I will definitely go ask uh, when I'm done with the live because that's a fantastic question. Is Let's see, Susan, is this stencil set part of a card kit? Not that I'm aware of. It was part of the new Be Bold release from Simon Says Stamp. Heidi wants the paste just for their names. Yes. Oh, good. Simon says, yes, you can. You need lots of water and the drops dry with some texture. 
Simon, thank you so, so much for answering that. There, can we read it better? If I get that stupid glare off my camera or off my mat. Okay, this is shiny bobble, and I want to make sure it's mixed up really good. Now, you could just spray it over the background. I've talked about this in other videos. Something I like to do if I don't want my spray... If I want it more controlled, I guess is what I want to say. I don't want it to be a fine mist and you have no control at all where it goes. I like to just shake it like you would, but then I take the little sprayer out and I take a paintbrush dipped in the mica stain. And then I just go ahead and add all of my little drops like this. This gives you way more control than if you just use the sprayer because the sprayer, you know, sometimes you can get a good mist. Sometimes, sometimes you get real mad because you've ruined all of that hard work. <laughs> or at least I do. <laughs> so that is what I'm doing here today is I'm just going to tap it all over. And it when it dries, I know it doesn't show up good here, but when it dries, you're going to have little blue flecks all over like you do with the purple one here. And they're going to have that great shimmer to them that I think goes so nicely with the lunar paste. So let's set this guy over to the side. Oh yes, Linda, that's so nice. First, Linda tells Simon thank you. And she said those would make adorable gift tags. Absolutely. All right, we're gonna move this for now and we're gonna talk about greetings. So as I mentioned earlier, I really want the focal point to be the background for these cards. And we're gonna dress them up a little bit more. I did add greetings to this one already, but let's go ahead and finish stamping our greetings for a couple of these. I'll finish the ones that are wet, we're gonna finish later on. <laughs> Let's see. Jen says, I think the neon paste on black cardstock would look really cool with the musical note stencil. Oh my gosh, Jen, that's a great idea. I love that. Molly would love to receive a card like this. Okay, Molly. I love that. So you can choose what I love about a stamp set like this. This is the Airy Greetings from Simon Says Stamp. This also is a new product from the Be Bold release. But what is awesome is we can have this great little, I love sentiment strips. So you can do it in two-tone or what I did for mine because I wanted it to be, I didn't want it to take away. I didn't really want to pull in another color. We're going to stamp our background with black and then heat emboss with white on top. Now, a couple of things that I found with this. You're going to want to use a ink that is going to dry fairly quickly. Whoops, I'm just dropping things everywhere. What I found worked really good, and you'll notice I've got lots of the strip already stamped is I used Distress Archival Ink in Black Soot. Now, I also heated up. When I did this one, I did go ahead and heat up this so it was dried really fast. I tried VersaFine first. It took forever to dry even with my heat tool and I nobody has time for that. So <laughs> I used a black archival ink. A black dye ink would also be great. And let's move this so I don't get my hand and everything else in it. What we're going to do, actually, let's go this way. These should be dry. Oh, that's what I wanted to show first. If you're ever worried that your ink hasn't dried before you want to heat emboss on top of it. Oh, man, I totally had to put my fingers in that embossing powder. I didn't have to, but I did. You can test to see if your background ink is dry by just putting some embossing powder on that strip. And that looks like that's dry. So that should be fine. I wonder if any of these aren't. No, they're all dry. Okay. I figured they were, but I thought we would try it. <laughs> 
Molly wasn't subtle, was she? <laughs> that she would like a card like this. I love it. So what I loved is even though we're doing a nice, simple sentiment, you can pick multiples that go together and create multiple strips, which I kind of think is a fun idea. So I obviously for this picked happy birthday ones that I thought worked good. And that's what I'll stamp here for the sample. But for a few of these, it'll probably be more like, you know, so happy for you or hello. You can do thank you. You're the best. Um, you can combine all kinds of different combinations and really any sentiment stamp set will work here. This is just the one I'm using. Oh, yay, JY finally made it to a live. So we're gonna go in, oh, I need to add powder to this, but not right now. Let's see what we got in here. I am going to prep these with a powder tool first. And then we're going to take our clear embossing ink And we're going to stamp our greetings. And I'm going to pick three more for the other card. We'll do something that's not birthday for the other one. So let's heat these up first. I like doing multiples at a time, if at all possible. Time saver. Just came in. Hi, Amy. So good to see you. What is everybody doing today? Tell me in the chat what your Easter plans are. I always love hearing. It's going to be loud for just a second. And there's our first set of sentiment strips. Now, I feel like we should pick some different ones. Oh, JY is from Hawaii too, Amy. Awesome. Does anyone have good Easter plans this weekend? We are having an Easter brunch Sunday, coloring eggs with mom and a few, Mandy said, oh, how fun. You know, I don't think I'm coloring eggs this year. I don't think I've done it for a few years. I probably should. Oh, I need to pick sentiments that are the same, don't I? Well, we can do, you're the best. I forgot to stamp some smaller um, some smaller sentiments. That's okay. And what size does thank you fit? This one. Watching and crocheting, celebrating my birthday. It's on Monday. Happy early birthday, Tanya. Oh, Amy, I'm sorry you have back pain. That it's no fun. All right. Sandy, Good Friday service is my favorite service. I know that probably sounds funny, but it's always my favorite. Okay. I am going to... I need to get another little strip here, a smaller one for my thank you greeting. Hi, Louisa. Oh, good, yes. Lots of birthday greetings for Tanya in the chat. I love it. Oh, let's do that different cleaner. Easter brunch and colored eggs with daycare kits. Oh. I'm having to do, change something here on the fly. All right, 
we'll let we need to let that dry for just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and do these two right now, though. And I have tons of these prepped so that I can off camera stamp, emboss, and die cut bunches of these all at one time. This is also, I'm going to show you on this one that I just stamped. So if you ever want to know if your base color ink is dry, you can do this. And obviously not dry. So then all you do is just take a paintbrush a dry paintbrush and that's and I'm just going to put that right back in the container and when that's dry we'll stamp our final greeting for that one but that's how I check that Now the great thing about this Airy Greetings stamp set is there are coordinating dies, which I love. Oh my gosh, Shirley, that is such a chore. Shirley is purging some stuff from her craft room. Yes, it is big time work. Hi, Gina. So we are going to go ahead and cut these into sentiment strips. I have two the same size, so I will have to run that through a couple times. And pop over to my die cutting. It's rainy in Northern California. All right, so we got a couple. And I'm going to dress these cards up with some gems here in just a second because I think they're going to be super fun for those flower centers. Easter brunch after church with sister's family, Margaret said. Making a blueberry lemon bunt cake and lemon meringue pie. Oh my gosh, that sounds fantastic. Susan's going to be speaking at their Easter service on Sunday. Wonderful. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this one together. And I've got some foam adhesive strips here. I love using these foam adhesive strips. And I want to pretty much make... We're going to make it exactly like this. Obviously, it's just a different color. And I'm going to put a couple strips here on the back. And we're going to put them right here in the middle of our card. We're, well, I'm going to start kind of in the middle. And I'm going to tilt them. You could also do them super straight if you like your greetings maybe a little bit straighter. I'm gonna try not to tilt too much, but just for a little added interest today, I think it's kind of fun. Yeah, Shari and I are, are headed to Margaret's house because that sounds amazing. <laughs> also, I'm hungry. I don't know why, you guys, I always come on these lives and I'm hungry, but I was messing around with something and then it was not enough time left to eat and probably should have eaten something but that's okay oh I love that you guys are connecting in the chat that's so fun oh awesome Shelly I'm so excited that you're gonna participate in the next sal that's so fun okay so here are our greetings so cute now, what I think is gonna make my cards even cuter, I got some little trays here and we're going to look and see what gems do we have? What color do I wanna use? For sure this, I think this one, I don't know if I like those for that one. We're gonna pick out some colors. 
But of course I have no idea what color I want to use. That's awesome. Okay, I think maybe I'm going to use yellow on that one. And then this. So this color is called taffy. What's your favorite comfort food? April said. Oh, I don't know. Probably something chocolate, which I'm not eating currently. Boo. Oh, I do know what it is. It's not chocolate. Chips and salsa. Chips and salsa forever, April. That's a great question. April wants to know what my favorite comfort food is. It's chips and salsa. Always, always. Oh, I'm sorry. Frank is alerting me to the stranger danger again, as always. Okay, so let's go in with our glue press and add some little dabs of glue. I've got my handy dandy little triangle tray and my embellishment wand. And we're going to put some fun little gems. Oh, where's the little teeny tiny one? You guys know I'm always looking for that little teeny tiny one. We wanna do, I wanna th do three different sizes I think for these, yeah, like that. And we're going to dress up our flower centers with some gems. Lots of shimmer and sparkle happening today. Shari, chips and salsa does sound good. Oh, Shirley, I'm so glad. Thank you for letting me know. Yes, and Susan, I like having mass-produced cards on hand. It does make it so nice, especially if you need it. So I don't want to maybe do the same thing for every one of these. But we'll see. We'll see where, where the spirit moves me here as we start adding little gems to these cards. Where's another teeny tiny? Is that one? That's the same size. Or maybe that's the smallest. Sorry, talking to myself. I don't mean to. Um. Oh, Margaret. Yes, she says they always have chips and salsa and guacamole in San Antonio. I'll be right there. Chips and salsa and guac, my favorite. I think I'm going to try this new recipe tonight for um, chicken tacos. So I'll let you guys know how that turns out. Chicken street tacos, I think is what it was called. Basically, I'm on board for anything taco, salsa, Enchilada, carne asada. <laughs> Do you guys see a theme here? Also, I'm super hungry. So it's pretty much going to be, um, I'm going to talk about that. I need to get off of that. Okay, Susan's got a question. Great. Bought that glue gun. Oh, good. I hope you love it. I love, love, love it. Bonnie says she has to get the neon uh, lunar paste. It's so pretty. I really am loving it. I think we're going to add another one to that. We'll do one for this little. I don't also, I don't want to add gems to every single flower center. I like it to be kind of imperfect ish. But I like the gems. And you could do multiple colors if you wanted to as well. It's really up to you like kind of personal preference. You could add little hearts. You could do more pearls, sequins. Oh, I love it. Super simple and a fun way to dress up that lunar paste stenciled background. Let's do our pink one, shall we? Oh, April says that uh, she and her husband judge Restaurants by their chips and salsa. That's 100% true. <laughs> and dips. <laughs> yes. Yes, I love that so much. Oh, let's see. What did Sandy say? Yes. Okay, Sandy had a fantastic point that I had thought of earlier. Oh, I am so far behind. Nicole, what are you doing, crazy girl? Hold on. 
I missed it. Where did it go? No, I didn't. Sandy says, I'm envisioning some really cute Halloween cards. You guys. Yes. Purple and that kind of neon. Okay. Mood ring. Voltage. And the tangent colors for Halloween cards. I really love these. Or this. I think it would be so cool. I was thinking the same thing. If you guys make some, tag me. I want to see because I think that would be absolutely amazing. All right, we're going to do, I'm going to do, this color is called Sunbeam. And we're going to add some to this one. Halloween, <laughs> Shirley says, love it. Yes. Shirley says, these are so bright and beautiful. Thank you. It's kind of a simple card, really, but so much fun. Lots of fun technique can be done with this and obviously all kinds of different embellishing, whatever you love. I'll just do a couple more. This does take probably the... Well, the cleaning takes the most time, but all, adding all, this many embellishments is really kind of time consuming, but, oh, I like the yellow. Love those tiny trays too. June says, wow, the neon just pops off the black cardstock. So vibrant. Yes. It's probably my favorite. I, I think it would look beautiful on white, but... It's so, so, so showy on the black. Um, I think on slate gray, it would be awesome. I think some of the colors, if you have some bright colors of cardstock, like colored cardstock, oh shoot. I think you could, oh dang, so sorry everybody, hold on. You could get some really fun results with some bright colors of cardstock too. Maybe like think more tone on tone. I think I'll try the pink and the green lunar paste with strawberry stencils from Pretty Pink Posh. Jen, I love that idea. Oh my word. If you do that, please tag me. I'm probably going to want to go make it. That's a great idea. Love, love, love that. It is, I know, obviously, with the magic of uh, television, <laughs> we I had lots of step outs for this one today because I didn't want things to potentially not dry and that would stink. But it does take a little time, dry time, but really these are quick and easy. If you get a bunch of backgrounds, you can literally put any kind of greeting you want on and you're good to go. Let's see how our blue background is drying, shall we? We're going to do a check-in. Look, that mica stain is drying, so you're definitely seeing more of the mist all over here. I think it's dry. It does dry pretty quick. Let's do orange-ish, maybe. Maybe just stick with these. I might just stick with my sunbeam. I love back black for backgrounds. Gina says, love these bright spring light cards. Thank you for creating and sharing. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you too. Louisa, I tend to be a very light background person as well. So sometimes it's fun. I always consider this playtime. Oh, I needed to get the rest of those greetings, don't I? Let's go back and do that real fast. Let's see if our black is dry. It looks like glitter paper. Yes. I love trying to find ways to turn my backgrounds into something that looks like pattern paper. And in this case, it's a textured paper. Let me see if that's dry. No. 
sure not. Let's heat it up so we can get that done. We can do a different greeting. doesn't take much to get that archival ink to dry. Oh, there we go. Much better. All right. Let me see. I think I did it up here, didn't I? Let's stamp that thank you so we can have an, just another version of how oh, we've reached the part of the stream where I've made a giant mess on my desk. Uh, thank, oopsies, thank you is what I was looking for. Put these back too. Um, you're the best. And just saying hi. Okay. And we got our powder tool. And we're going to stamp that thank you. And we'll heat emboss that real quick. And then we'll do the thank you trio of greetings for another background. And then I, like I said, I will finish like the step outs for all those blue cards. So I'll end up having, I think, six cards when I, it's all said and done, which is awesome for one crafting session. I love having multiples. So clever being able to make your own set of sentiment strips. How awesome is this set? You guys, I love it. Now, what do you think I did with all of my tape? Let's die cut these and put together another one real quick. And then we're gonna, um, I'll show you the three step outs together and we'll kind of check and see like dry time, how much those first or that, the, the um, lunar paste from earlier in the stream, how it's dried. Oh, I didn't get that one die cut at all. That was, need to roll it through a little further. The great thing about these sentiment strips too, is you can totally do these in any color you want. So let's say you're doing pastel cards, or you need cards for another you know, season. You can easily, easily achieve that. Which one? Which one? Which one? Let's do this. Actually, let's do the blue one, shall we? We'll put together the, the blue background. Um, let's see. I have some questions, but for some reason, oh, oh, nope. Let me go back here. June says, could you compare lunar paste, solar paste, and the neon paste? Uh, June, I actually do not have all of them, so um, I probably can't. Let me ask, I bet Simon has a video. If I find one, I will repost it. How about that? I. If I get all of the paste, if I pick up a few more, I definitely can do that. That's a great suggestion. Uh, question from Jin B. Can you, whoops, can you ink the top on top of lunar paste? I would imagine if it's dry, you probably could. I have not tried to ink on top. She said, for example, the seeds on the strawberry. Uh, if it's all the way dry, I may try it. If I was doing that, I would probably try it on a scrap piece of paper first 
And I might use something like an archival ink. Let's see. Donna, what are you baking? Donna says she's here, but she's baking. And of course, I'm hungry, so I want to know. <laughs> Mandy, I do like organizing my craft room. I just organized mine a couple weeks ago. And guess what, everyone? I have kept it clean. Yay. Go me. All right, so there is more of a thank you style card. And let's get some bluish gems. I want these over here. I already know which ones. These are called Surf. And I think they're going to match beautifully. Look at that color. What color is this? That needs to go there. We'll do a couple and then I will show um, the backgrounds I did earlier. Could you dye white texture paste black? Um, probably with a re-inker, but I've not tried it because I like the black grit paste from Tim Holtz, so I've not ever tried to do make my own. Oh no, Mandy's reorganizing her craft room and doesn't like it. What don't you like about it, Mandy? Is it the process or you just don't like where you've moved things? Because I have done that in the past where I've maybe moved things and I don't love it. Oh my gosh, Donna. Hey, Shari, we need to go to Donna's. After we go and have um, all of the, the blueberry pancake and stuff, let's go eat our meal at Donna's house. <laughs> have you done a craft room tour? Louisa said, have I missed it? No, doing it in April. It is quite an undertaking to film and to gather all the information. So my first step was to actually clean it up <laughs> so that I wasn't super embarrassed. <laughs> oh, good. Shari has an answer to the white or the dying white paste black. She says, yes, she did it before she knew black paste existed. Shari, thank you. I just hadn't tried it. I should have just asked if anyone here had tried it. That would have been smart. Thank you. Thank you, Shari. If you want a good black paste, though, and don't want to make your own. Oh, my gosh, Nicole. Uh, I love, love. Oh, I already have some. I like the black paste from Tim Holtz. It's really creamy and good. Too much cleaning. Oh, yes. You have to fully commit. I've decided. Like, I made a big enough mess, and maybe you have too, that I was fully committed. There was no going back. And it does stink because I would always rather be creating than cleaning. But I will tell you that cleaning up my craft room was probably the best thing I've done. And I'm kind of embarrassed that I didn't do it earlier because I have felt so much more creative since I cleaned it. So if you can make it through, it's worth it is what I'm saying. Oh, good. Susan says, thank you, Shari. Okay, you guys, I will finish like the rest of this. Obviously they would be attached to white card bases, but let's take a little peek. at the cards. Aren't they fun and pretty together like this? I absolutely love it. Oh man. And here are our first layers from earlier. So an hour, well, a little less than an hour ago. That was layer one and it's completely dry. Oops, layer two is not completely dry. So it's not quite an hour old. And I just put my finger in that but it'll dry some of it's dry that was a little bit thicker I can see it's thick here so you can always use a heat tool and heat it up let me wipe that off before I get it on something 
Sue says she has to do a major purge and be before clean and reorganize. So I did that at the same time. Um, I had boxes set up right outside my craft room door and I did purge box, a throwaway box, giveaway box. I had lots of different ones and I would, I just took it straight out and then I would reorganize. I did try to stick to like one area of the room at a time, but it, it got bad there for a little bit. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Thank you so much, June. Oh, Shari even did a video. Shari, if you know what video it is, send me a link and I'll put it down in the description here um, on how to turn your white paste black. I will add that to that the description because that would be great to know. Let's say you're in a pinch and or you just don't want to go buy black paste for one thing. Um, that is very handy to do. So thank you. Thank you for that info. Let's see. Did I miss anybody else's questions? April says I have commitment issues and that I don't want to commit to cleaning up the craft room. Send help. That was me. Um, but I am so happy <laughs> and I've been keeping it clean, like making myself every night, clean it up after every project. And if you guys know me, I don't like I was, I would have been embarrassed to show you how I was doing lives before, like in this little tiny space with crap, piled around me. It was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. The lunar paste really pack a punch. Catherine said, oh, they so do. They are so creamy. They go on so beautifully. Uh, I'm anxious to, to get some others like the solar paste and I'm to try some others. So I know there was the question if I could compare them. I will definitely try to get, pick up some more and do that soon. Uh, Susan says, I have so much pattern paper. I would percent true. And Shari has already sent me the link. So I will be adding that to the description as soon as our live is done. June says she procrastinated cleaning her craft room for over two years. That was me. I moved from the room across the hall to this one two years ago. And I've been promising a craft room tour since that time thinking I'm going to clean it. I'm going to have it clean. I'm going to have it clean. I never did it. And it was a mess for two years. And I'm really mad at myself for that. But it's cleaned up now. Um, I only have a couple of little things. I still have a little bin of stamps and things that were never put away that I still need to go through. And then I have one little stack of fabric that needs to find a new home. And so those are my two little stacks of things that need to be cleaned up. It's so nice. Shari, thank you. I'll put that in my information. Okay, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this Friday Live. And I am going to wish all of you a very happy Easter. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And I will see you guys all here next week for another Friday Live. Thanks, everyone. The supplies used in today's video are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another project that you might be interested in. Please remember to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to never miss a new live video. Thank you so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.